you have this confidence when you go in the ring um, that I've only seen a couple people and have it. And I want to kind of get inside your head, like <laughs> besides training, like you do. And I know you're, you're meticulous about training. You mm -hmm. train all the time with your dog. Uh -huh. What goes into your head when you're getting, they call your number, boom, you're in the ring. Uh -huh. What's the first thing? Are you nervous? Are you? No, not I'm not nervous. Okay. At all. No. Um, <clears throat> Because I, I, you know, kind of test a dog out before I go in. You know, I'll do a couple little warm-ups mm -hmm. with her and, or any of the dogs I've had. And then I can tell how the dog will act in the ring. You know that? Yeah. Okay. Because if you're going to do that out here, you're going to be okay in there, <laughs> you know? Like, can you give that secret away? Like, what is that little thing you do that... No. Okay. <laughs> you got to come watch. Guys, I've got a great show for you tonight. I got um, a guest that I've been hiding for a long time. Flo has been a friend of mine for many, many, many years. And um, Flo was the first person who I ever learned AKC obedience from. And uh, that's you were the person who introduced me to AKC obedience. You taught me and Goofy the basics. Um, and it's something I really enjoyed. We did it for quite a way. Got all the way through utility. We had a great time with it. And um, I just want to talk to you about how you got started um, and your incredible career of mm -hmm. you know what you've done with all these different dogs you've had. You've had Border Collies, you've had Rottweilers, you've trained so many different dogs and have competed so much. So um, what, what got you into the AKC obedience of all the obediences? Well, I used to live back east uh, near Albany, New York, mm -hmm. and I worked for, I always call it Sears and Rubbish. <laughs> and one of the guys there, uh, he used to have Siberian Huskies, and he showed at the dog shows. And so he'd say, well, why don't you come see it? So I did, but he was showing in the breed ring, and then I sort of saw these dogs doing stuff. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I'm going to see what they're doing. So I went over, and I got interested with that, you mm -hmm. know, like that. And so I didn't have one of the dogs right away, my dogs. Mm -hmm. um, we got, because I divorced my husband, and we wound up, going down to um, Biloxi, Mississippi, mm -hmm. where my brother was stationed in the Air Force, and I was taking my mom with me. So in the meantime, I did get um, Dobermans. I had a, two Dobermans. And so just for fun, I went and showed <laughs> at the, in the breed ring. Okay. I showed in uh, Alabama, Mobile, Alabama, uh -huh. And I won the class. And when you say the breed ring, that's actually referring to the, like look the pretty. show stuff, the yeah, look pretty the stuff, look confirmation. Pretty ring. Right, okay. So, and he was only a nine, nine to 12 month dog. Uh -huh. And, but he won, right? Uh -huh. And I actually got a point or two points, whatever uh -huh. they had. And I was just excited. That was my first time in the ring and all. <laughs> and now I got all these professional handlers there. It was really comical for uh -huh. me. Uh -huh. So then I moved on and I saw, again, I saw the obedience there. And so I only stayed down there for like eight months. And then I came out to California. Mm. The only problem here, was I had to sell the dogs, though, because nobody takes dogs here. Wow. Oh, yeah. What do you mean they don't take dogs? Were you moved? Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, you can't, you couldn't at that time. This was back in 1977. Okay. And nobody took in the apartment. You couldn't take dogs. Oh. So um, I finished, you know, up with them. And then um, I was here about eight months. And then I met someone that I fell in love with. And mm -hmm. he had a house. And so I got another dog. Okay. <laughs> and it turned out it was it turned out to be a Rottweiler. He had a German Shepherd, and it turned out to be a Rottweiler. Okay. And so we got the dog, and it started. And I was really doing well with it. I went to you know actually I was training it myself, and mm. the dog was doing very good in the ring, and you know. And at that time, also, they did not have open A and open B utility. It was just open or utility. So right. you were you were struggling against the <laughs> you know the really good people. Yeah. But it was everything was coming to me, and but I was looking for the you know a good trainer. Mm -hmm. So I told my husband, um, I said I'm going to find the best trainer in that country. Mm -hmm. And so my friend who was in this for a long time, so I said you got to find me a got to find the trainer george okay. so he did and it was uh Anne marie silverton yep. up in stockton that's how we were introduced yes from Anne marie 
So it worked out really well. And, um, and she was coming down here for, oh, let's see, once a month, she would stay three days oh, wow. and do, you know, lessons down here. So mm -hmm. he, he was doing her book. So he said, he'll get me in. And he did. And, but the only thing was I had three lessons from her and she stopped coming. And I, that was the end of her coming down here. Oh, wow. So I'm like, oh man. <laughs> so, but apparently I did so well in the three lessons. She said, I want you to come up, take lessons. Wow. Okay. So I said, you betcha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I did. But that's a, that's a heck of a drive. Yeah. Well, at that time it was, um, the speed limit was 55. Uh -huh. Six hour drive. I went six hours up, did my lesson, and I came home. The same day? Yes. Well, that's dedicated. I had, wow. I was so excited going up, yeah. and I was so excited coming back. It didn't, but when I came home, man, I crashed. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it was really good. And I'd go every, probably every two to three weeks wow. up there. Okay. And so time went by, and, um, that's when I got, let's see, that was Willie at the time. And he was a good dog, but he had a problem, health problem. Mm -hmm. Was that a Rottweiler? Yes. Okay. And then um, another friend of mine up in Lake Tahoe, she had, we went up there to visit and we'd always stay there for like a week or mm -hmm. so at her house. And I'm like, where did you get that dog? Mm -hmm. And she had a Rottweiler. <clears throat> so she told me and she said, well, um, they're going to, you know, breed the dog again, and they're breeding a second one, but to a different, like, different father. And I said, no, I want the mother. I said, I want this, you know, this dog's mother. So I make a long story short, that's what happened, and I got um, a puppy from them. I went up, and, and I learned how to, you know, test puppies. Mm -hmm. And I went up there and um, picked a puppy and I went up well we went up to see them when they were about five weeks old they were in uh, Dinuba uh -huh. which would be like straight across from Fresno if you okay. went into this near the mountains there mm -hmm. and she said that it, they were five weeks old and they were very very active so and they had three boys six girls so I s asked the lady if I could take the three boys out just to see you know I said mm -hmm. geez they really are active I says, well, take them out back and kind of see if they have a little test at five weeks. Because mm -hmm. you test them at seven weeks. Right. So we went out, and uh, everybody, well, everybody, three, three dogs, three people took puppies. So we sat there. The first dog, I threw this little, it was like a paper ball. You wrap it up, and it, you just toss it. And the dog is supposed to go out and get it and mm -hmm. bring it back. So the first dog, it ran out, and he gave me the paw, he kept running <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> and okay uh -huh. so then the second one goes out and he grabbed it but he didn't bring it back okay and i was uh sitting on the ground and normally if you're testing you don't do that okay. but these again aren't real tests and so i did it for the third dog and he ran out there grabbed that came and jumped right into my lap wow and i said i want this one <laughs> <laughs> so um, they came down uh, from there, and they came down to the house, and they and I said, just the boys. I don't want. I'm not interested in the girls. So uh -huh. they brought the three puppies down at seven weeks. It was seven, like seven weeks, two days. Uh -huh. And um, so I tested them, and I was teasing the guy. I said, you didn't change their ribbons on right, them, did yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So they all tested the exact same. Oh, really? Yeah. After that? Okay. It was awesome. So I did Murphy, and he still stands at number two Rottweiler in the country. Wow. Yeah. Okay, can this we is talk, points. Can we talk a little bit about that? Because it's not a topic I uh -huh. even thought we'd discuss, but when you select a puppy, uh -huh. you've done this a lot, mm -hmm. um, what are the things you look for in that puppy that, that you're going to take them home with you to live with? Well, I want the dog to be like attentive to me. Mm -hmm. You know, like I say, the, the one dog gave me the paw, mm -hmm. you know, and like, Phew, I don't need to do that. Right. Well, you want somebody that's like, hey, what are you doing? You know what? What are you going to do now? What are you going to do next? They want you want somebody that's alert, uh, that has is is kind of active, um, and then you give uh, when you're testing. I always give like the sound test. Uh, I I have a, a frying pan there and I have a spoon, mm -hmm. and when the dog isn't looking, I go bam because a lot of the dogs will go boop. And they take off and they run away. Like a startle response. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. they get scared. Sure. And so you want the <clears throat> you want the dog 
to um, turn around and look at you and say, gotcha. what was that? Right. You know? Right. Um, you want to make sure that the house or wherever they're at, you mm-hmm. test them normally outside, make sure there's nobody around and they're in a strange place. Okay. You a don't, strange place. yes, you don't test them in the backyard. You don't test them uh, where the other puppies are. Why is that? Because you want to see what this dog does by itself. Gotcha. How is it going to act? Mm-hmm. It's just like if you were lost in the woods. Right. What would you do? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're with a bunch of friends, everybody like walks out of the woods. Mm-hmm. So you do the same thing with the puppy. And you like, uh, first of all, I put it down. And I head it in the other direction. I'll sit it, and it's going that way, and I back up. Mm-hmm. And then the dog is like, boom, and look and look, and then it turns around, it should come to you. Okay. Okay. And then um, I'll leave it there looking at me and call it, see mm-hmm. if it'll come. The dog should come to me. Okay. Um, these are all, you know, um, a lot of people say, well, it's only a puppy. Right. Well, that's true, but if Gen- it, that's the way it's supposed to test. Genetics. Yeah. Right. And yeah. see what happens. Mm-hmm. So, and then um, it comes to the the frying pan thing mm-hmm. with the noise. Um, it see, you want to see if the dog will. You you pick it up under its belly and you kind of hold it. Mm-hmm. You know, like between your legs. Okay. And for about thirty seconds, and you see if the dog struggles to get away mm-hmm. or does it. You know, sometimes the good thing is it'll go boom, boom, boom a little bit, mm-hmm. and then it relaxes. And you and like that. that. Yes, that's what you, you like yep. that. Mm-hmm. You don't want it to um, go nuts and, you know, try and get out, wiggle away, mm-hmm. and, it, and it turns out good. But, again, you cannot have people doing anything because a lot of people will, you know, they're making noise and it upsets, it kind of, not upsets, but distracts the dog. Excuse the test. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I went up to one in, um, for a friend up in Colorado, and this lady they hired to do that and she had a son there that was um probably about eight nine years old uh-huh. and this kid keeps running out there running out there and this you know, for me it destroyed the whole thing and because i told my friend i says you don't want any of those puppies what really no because they were so distracted and they didn't really do anything and just by watching them I didn't think they would be great. But she became friends with that lady, mm-hmm. and she felt obligated to get a puppy. <laughs> so the next day, so I said, I don't want to test another, you know, test him again. So I dug three puppies out, out of the litter that I thought maybe would be good. And we took them to the uh, other person's yard, and we tested them separately. And they were like, okay, mm-hmm. but not great. And right. I told her that. I said, you want a great dog. These were Rottweilers. Mm-hmm. I said, you want a great Rottweiler. I said, they're not going to do it. Mm-hmm. So, and that's the way it turned out. You know, the dog was nice. Yeah. You know, he passed, but he wasn't like, what are we going to do next? Right. No. He wasn't really engaged no. to her. And no, I think that's a big thing people don't see with obedience. You only get that short window. You want that dog yes. to be like, I want to do this. Absolutely. I please, you don't want to do they it. They say, you know, you want the dog looking at you. Say, what are we going to do now? Mm-hmm. You know, we already did that. Yeah. What about now? Do you Let's ever, do, do you hold them upside down, like on their backs? Yes. You do that yes, too? Yes, okay. you do that. And you put it right here and there. Right. And there. Yeah, and you do that one too. And you see absolutely. how calm they are. Yeah. I mean, overall, I think one of the things that we look for as trainers we want the dog, we're going to spend 10 to 15 mm-hmm. years with this dog, right? I, want to spend, I mean, hopefully, I yeah. want to get the best dog I can get. But what I look for in dogs, and I always explain this to other people, is I want confidence. Uh-huh. I want a solid, confident yeah. dog to work with. I don't want a skittish, neurotic, nerve right. bag of a dog. Because they might be nice dogs, but I don't want them living with me. No. You know? No. And because you want a dog that will, you know, like anything else, if you're scared, if you're scared, you're like this. You don't mm-hmm. need that because the dog is not going to cooperate yeah. at all. Um, this lady that I used to go test her puppies, she was a breed person mm-hmm. where you run around pretty in the mm-hmm. ring. <laughs> and um, and she would she would do it as a, um, kind of like as a picnic. She had a porch on her house. Mm-hmm. So she had everybody sitting, I mean, everybody sitting on the porch watching the test and these people are talking and 
And and I would always tell her, would you have them please shut up? Mm-hmm. And and if something went wrong where for the puppy, she would kind of do it again and again. So the dog got it the third time. <laughs> so that was good. Right, but sure. No. <laughs> right, <laughs> so right, I just right. zipped it and never yeah. said a word. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh my god. So I tested one of the litters one time for um, one of my students, and. The one dog tested absolutely perfect, and I told, and she was like second in line mm-hmm. for for getting one. And I said to her, "Unless you get, we'll just say like the, the one with the yeah. red yarn on it, if they you, if you can't get that dog, don't get any. Don't take any of them. No. Yeah. I said chances are that person that's going to get they're going to take the big puppy, mm-hmm. and they did. So she got that puppy. The dog was a breed champion." A, a, you know, utility champion. Wow. Oh, yeah, dog was perfect. Wow. Absolutely perfect. Do you think there's a difference in the dogs that we're breeding here? First, do you think there's a difference in the dogs we're breeding for AKC show line and working dogs, like like the ones? I think so. Oh, some of them, yeah. The perfect example are the golden retrievers. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, you look at them in, in the breed ring. They're absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous, yeah. But some of them can't do anything. They're, yeah. you know, kind of laid back, and mm-hmm. yeah, I'll do it in a minute. Mm-hmm. And and then you got the high strung ones, and some of them are, you know, over some <laughs> over of the, the field ones. Ooh, right. yeah. Yeah. So now, when well, they want those dogs, they everybody. A lot of them aren't doing that now. Mm-hmm. Uh, they want them in their obedience ring because they're kind of hyper. And uh, unless you know how to train those dogs, yeah. you know, they don't score too well. I mean, I find Goldens, especially, they, they have the really thin nerve. Like, they take things real personally. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you get too hard of a correction, they can't handle it. If you don't correct them, then they're just all over the place. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with, because I don't train. I train a few Goldens, mm-hmm. but I'm not you know, really into golden. So I like the working dogs. Like the Rottweilers, that's yes. your favorite. Now, do you think there's... And I do, I, I did have Border Collies too. I had. I think when we first met, you had a Border Collie, uh, right? I don't remember, but I had five Border Collies. Yeah. And then I, the first time I had five um, Rotties. Mm-hmm. And then I started, because that's when I started lessons with Anne Marie. Mm-hmm. And um, she wanted me to get a, one of her border collies, and I did. And so then I got another border collie. <laughs> so we went, not all at once, but right. you know, gradually with the uh, relationship, uh, I got five of them. They were great. That's interesting because I, th- I can't think of a really more different dog than a Rottweiler and a border collie. Yeah. What, what did you see as first? What did you like? individually about each of those dogs like what what drew you to the border collie and then what pushed you back to the roddies well um why i like they were absolutely gorgeous they were just beautiful dogs they were from uh, australia the the border collies yes they are not from here right okay Okay. border collies here for me are not border collies Mm -hmm. talk about that because i think it's interesting i want to talk about that with 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 different dogs i talk about Uh what is the difference between those border collies? They're probably much more hard. They're harder working dogs. Well, right? they're um, you know they're like her, obviously they're herding dogs, mm-hmm. and apparently the way these people breed them, um, they you know a lot of them I see they're not nice dogs. The ones yeah. from here. Yes. Okay. Yes, and um, the one she has, and you know a lot of people would say, oh, they're not going to do anything, you know, because they're kind of laid back. Not always. They're not always laid back. They were very good. I mean, my dogs are great in the ring. And I mean, um, the one I had, not the, it wasn't the last one. Um, this was one named Danny, I named him. And I got a thousand arch points on him. Wow. You think he won a few? Yeah. Explain that to me because I think that's something people are so fascinated with. Um, like you, st- with a, we, we start with novice, we go into open, and we go into utility, right? And then there's all these other things. And I think for people getting into the sport, people who are just going to start learning mm-hmm. AKC obedience, um, talk a little bit about this process that happens. So once you get through utility, which is the final level, mm-hmm. right? Then we go to UDX, and then we go to. You don't have to go UDX. Okay. But you will if you want to get arch points. Right. That's, so let's talk about that. Yeah. So how does that okay. happen? Okay. Um, okay. Years ago, you did not have open A and B. Right. Okay. It was just open and utility. So 
uh, if you were just beginning your first time in, you were competing against the experts. Thank okay. You. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, well, I competed against a few experts, yeah. <laughs> but I was doing well. I was very happy. I mean, it wasn't like winning, but mm -hmm. I'd get sometimes third, second place. And okay. that's why I wanted a real good trainer. Mm -hmm. Like, what could I improve on this? So, and then the AKC split it, and then they made it open A right. and open B. So um, once you get through that, uh, if you're, you're going to go for this so-called OCH, which is Obedience Trial Champion, once you get through, then you can only show an open B and uh, utility B. You're not going to get points from uh, open A or uh, utility A. So once you do that, because once, well, let me just kind of go back a little. You finish now, but you have to pass three times. Right. You finish open, you have to pass three times. And utility, you have to pass three times. And then you can start, once you get that UD, mm -hmm. uh, then you can start going for um, arch points. Okay. And arch points, uh, it determines uh, how many people are showing in the ring. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they have a scale. Uh, you can, you know, they have sheets that, because if there's like five to 10 dogs in X amount of points, uh, 11 through 15 X amount of points. So it just depends on how many points were in the ring. And and then how do you become an obedience trial champion? Like how, when do you get that title? How many points do you need to do that? You need a hundred. Okay. Yeah. And you have to, it's not just a hundred. You have to, um, you have to win utility once you have to win open once. And then the third one is either or. You have to win at least three times. First place. Yes. Okay. And then yes. and plus a hundred points. Yeah, up to a hundred. Right, right, right. And if you get a hundred points, then you can just keep going. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I got my. Um, well, even with the dog I have now, the Rottweiler, she has. Um, she's like arch number two. Wow. And so she's so she has about two hundred fifty arch points. And then you go for arch three when you get if you, when you're at yeah. three hundred point level. Right. But now, do you still have to win first place again at that yes, level? Yes, okay, you have to it. do the same winnings. You have mm -hmm. to do win three times. Okay. And um, we went to Missouri uh, a few weeks ago. They had the Rottweiler Nationals, and um, I showed her six times. Um, they had, in the morning, you had your, you know, everybody, mm -hmm. and then in the afternoon, they did it again, and then the next day, they did it again. So um, my class... Well, they open in utility, so I showed six times. She won all six. Wow. First place. You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a really interesting thing because when you look at this, and, and I wanna, I'm going to bounce around a lot of things. Uh -huh. There's so many things I want to ask you. We've talked so much, but we've never really sat down and had this kind of a talk, which I think is so fascinating. Um, Rottweilers, right? And, and I'm bouncing back now for a second. We look at Rottweilers as being these really, it's a strong bred dog a dominant dog mm -hmm. is there a difference or what is the difference between the rottweilers we're seeing in let's say the protection dog sports mm -hmm. versus the or maybe just you can speak more on the obedience ones. i know the, i know the protection dog ones how do they differentiate in that like the, the ones that are going to go out and do schutzen or, or whatever and the ones that are going to go do akc obedience um i would think because of you know like breeding okay mm -hmm. if you're in that thing where you're going to go and do the um other thing than a uh, than the akc events and you want the dog like to be an attack dog mm -hmm. um i would think um you would have to try and find a breeder right that are like breeding those type of dogs sure. some of them are not you know uh, I look for first thing I look for in that is temperament. Right. I don't want a dog that's like vicious right. or wants to do all that stuff. Right. And a lot of people sometimes ruin the dog because they're playing. When a dog is a little bit kind of pushy, mm -hmm. they play tug of war with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no. Yeah, you don't like that. For you what don't you're want doing. that yeah. because they're already teed. The dog is already coming that way mm -hmm. and if they're doing that and then they're struggling and you know yanking and pulling and mm -hmm. playing tug of war um they're just making the dog that way mm -hmm. okay a lot of people who do protection dog sports with them i mean they, they're not looking for aggression dogs i mean a lot of people who don't know they're they're, they're looking in the wrong direction uh -huh. and they do too much with the dogs early on but i'm interested that when you're looking for so, so if you see that kind of a drive in the dog even an akc dog that's just completely out for you um, I wouldn't take a dog that's, you know, 
uh, like say they want to go after somebody mm -hmm. or something. I mean, my toy. dog barks. But like, what about a toy? Like if they're playing toys. Oh, that's or fine. Like that. Oh, you're good with that. Yes, I'm good when the dog. I kind of test the dog out. Like now, you know, I would test a dog out once it's over its like puppyhood, see mm -hmm. how it's doing, and then um, and see how it does when I you know play tug of war mm -hmm. with it. If it like gets kind of, if you want to say vicious with it, then I Fix don't it, do it. it. I just you know forget it i okay. want the dog to be kind right and then after because the dog i have now she's you know she'll go out and bark at the sure. fence you know sure. somebody's walking by mm -hmm. uh but she's not vicious mm -hmm. and she's very friendly with the other dog because i board dogs at my house and she's very because they're in the house with her right and they're very friendly but i only board dogs that i know right i don't just take anybody's dog so the so you love the Rottweiler for the reason that they're really focused on work. They have a good work ethic. Mm -hmm. That's what you like the stable yes. temperament. Yes. Right. So I mean, so you don't see dogs really. And I mean, I, uh, the same thing in protection. Like w with the dogs I've worked with, really solid Rottweiler is not going to be aggressive. Right. It's going to if we teach it right the protection. Mm -hmm. It's in the line of a game. Right. And they're going to do it on the sport field and stuff like that. But I think this idea of the vicious dog being a good protection dog is really a bad idea. People don't get yeah. that. Like it's yeah. it's just a You're bad absolutely. genetic, right? Right. And what we really want when we look at things that we do is we want good genetics. We want these yeah. dogs being bred for good genetics, and all these good breeders are breeding for good genetics. And it's yeah. overlooked now by <clears throat> the rescue community and the feel good animal rights community, where there's oh, it's only rescue dogs, all uh -huh. that. We're really getting away from the idea that these dogs were bred genetically to be good with people, good with right. other dogs, and all this stuff, and all yeah. this backyard breeding you want crap. want temperament. Yeah, and this other mm -hmm. stuff is just destroying our breeds. Oh yeah, you know? and it's really nice when because um, <clears throat> the dog, like for instance, my dog will go out and you know somebody's walking by, mm -hmm. it'll bark at the person. Sure, that's fine. Or like when I'm going to come out of the house, it's um, you know, and I'll leave the like the solid door open and it's got the screen door on it you know and she's looking out and if if somebody walks out because they're fixing the house there and stuff so if somebody walks by you can see a whole change in her bark mm -hmm. she says i don't know that guy and it's like yeah, it's and it's warning mm -hmm. okay but then say you come over and you know the dog already and then she'll look and she'll go oh there right. you go. oh my god he's <laughs> <Right>. here <laughs> You know, right. and she's very happy. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and that's the kind of dog I want. Yeah. You know, I don't want some dog and then um, protection. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same thing. If you're walking somewhere, if somebody's going to um, maybe jump you or something, you want the dog to say, hey, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know? I think it's just a natural tendency of the dog to be protected. Oh, yeah. A lot of times you don't even have to train the dog mm -hmm. to, to do that's in their natural tendencies. Mm -hmm. I think we train them for the sport. Yeah. You know, to know how to, people always say this, I had a really good interview with somebody who said, people are teaching all these dogs to bite or breeding dogs to mm -hmm. bite, but they're not breeding dogs to out. Yeah, right. Right. So that's where you get in this <clears throat> genetic mess. The dog is biting harder and harder and harder and harder, and it's not being taught or bred to be able to be compliant to the person and say, mm -hmm. okay, you said out, okay, I'm going to out. Yeah. But I think in Europe, they're doing a better job breeding a lot of these dogs, you know, as much oh, as yeah. I'm against a lot of the stuff with Europe with all their regulations and crazy, no prong collar, no e-collar and stuff like that. Um, and we'll touch on that. Mm. They do breed nice dogs. You know, they're, yeah. they're, they're doing a really good job on, on a well, lot of the breeds. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's I mean, good. Um, you you um, have this way when I watch you compete, and I've watched you compete uh -huh. dozens and dozens of times, um, you have this confidence when you go in the ring um, that I've only seen a couple people and have it. And I want to kind of get inside your head, like <laughs> besides training, like you do. And I know you're, you're meticulous about training. You mm -hmm. train all the time with your dog. Uh -huh. What goes into your head when you're getting, they call your number, boom, you're in the ring. Uh -huh. What's the first thing? Are you nervous? Are you? No, not I'm at not all? nervous. Okay. At all. No. Um, <clears throat> Because I, I, you know, kind of test the dog out before I go in. You know, I'll do a couple little warm-ups mm -hmm. with her and or any of the dogs I've had. And then I can tell how the dog will act in the ring. You know that? Yeah. Okay. Because if you're going to do that out here, you're going to be okay in there. <laughs> 
you know. Like, can you give that secret away? Like, what is that little thing you do that? No. Okay. <laughs> you got to come watch you, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. The other thing is, though, when I'm in the ring, mm -hmm. okay, I do not look outside the ring. Oh, okay. That's I don't great know advice. who's standing there because I'm concentrating on what I'm doing. Okay. I don't go like from point to point. You know, we're going from here. Now we got to go over there. Okay. And, um, you know, I concentrate on the dog because I'm in between exercises. So I talk to my dog going over because you can. Right. Between okay. exercises. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So okay. once we get lined up again, you know, it's, um, and there's just certain things that um, years ago we used to go to this, I forgot the name of it. It was a big um, issue. It was down in Texas. Mm. And um, the gal, she was she was <laughs> she was not um very nice to me but she was there uh -huh. so um so i went over and i knew i'd make her nervous so i went over and stood by the ring and all i did was <laughs> stand there and fold my hand uh -huh. my arms you know and oh she failed terribly oh, God. so then she went and uh we were going to do the open and i had murphy and she went and got her trainer and they went on the other side Okay, when uh, Murphy came, <laughs> when Murphy was in, and um, I just happened, I was walking from w really across the ring, and I just happened to look up, and they were standing there. They were standing doing the same thing with their arms folded, and uh -huh. I just kind of chuckled. And so we continued our thing, and then um, we were going to do the uh, what they call the drop on recall. So I sit the dog, and then you start to walk away, <clears throat> and you can't turn around when you walk away from that dog right. until you get to where you're going. And in the next ring over, this dog, they, he threw a dumbbell, or the guy threw the dumbbell over. The dog went to get it, and he crashed the jump. Okay. And he knocked the jump over <laughs> in the ring. So my dog's head went, so, I mean, everybody would, right? right? I was dying to get to the other side. <laughs> and so I turned, you know, when I turned around, I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> and she, w I mean, he was just so concentrated on that dog, but I had a way to unconcentrate okay. him. <laughs> so I called him in. And as soon as, because uh, the judge there did not, you know, wait for the dog to turn his head. Mm -hmm. When I turned around, you know, he went like this, call your dog. Mm -hmm. So the dog came in, did his thing, and, and he wound up, um, we had like 64 entries. We came in third wow. out of 64 dogs. And nobody, yeah, and my, two, crash, right? my <laughs> two friends over there, they didn't, they didn't get what they wanted. That's funny. So you don't look outside of the ring, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, once you step past that threshold, now it's you and your dog. Yes. Right? And whether it's open or utility, it doesn't matter. Do you, you're, you're engaged to your dog from that minute you step into the minute you, you don't ever play with your dog or anything? Because like, I see some people, they're like playing touch this, do this. Well, that's spin, okay. I mean, you're okay if you with want that. to do that. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, okay. absolutely. But I don't want her because if I get her kind of jumpy or something, yeah. then she's gonna then she goes like with a growl, okay. but it's a play growl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I don't do that with her. Okay. I may fluff her up a little mm -hmm. bit around her head or mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. But um, no, I don't do those other things. How about people who get their dogs in the ring and then they're they just can't keep that dog all focused on them? Like what what is what's their problem? Like, well, their problem is the dog isn't trained properly. Mm. They better work on it outside the <laughs> ring. <laughs> right, right. So you think if the dog is trained outside the ring, how? So what about dogs that where they say the dog is just ring wise? Like once it does everything perfect in the park when I'm training, but once I get in that ring. The dog well, because when, when, when you start training the dog, okay, there's a lot of people that had said to me when they were training with me, mm -hmm. um, well, you can't do that in the ring. You can't give cookies to the dog. Mm -hmm. I said, we're not in the ring. I <laughs> said, you're trying to teach this dog something. And they take it as what these people are doing in the ring. Mm -hmm. They should be doing. Right. Not yet. I right. mean, you got to go step by step. I yeah. mean, we did it with you. Yeah. And once you start doing, then you start kind of like sucking back with mm -hmm. all the, ah, ah. Mm -hmm. and then uh, the dog starts like behaving and, you know, learning that I got to do this and that without being uh, tortured. Yeah. Well, you were very fair. I mean, that, that was a fun thing because Goofy was really young when we started. <coughs> yeah. And well, all those foundations really helped going all the way through it with I IGP. And mm -hmm. then later, years later, it was probably... 
I mean, I don't know when Goofy must have been, I think, nine or so when I put his utility on him, uh-huh. his UD. And I still remember the little things that you talked about and you know, mm-hmm. little tips you gave me. Um, but it was always interesting to me. Like, and I hear what you're saying and I see what you're doing uh-huh. when you're competing. And I just see other people with their little issues like, oh, you know, my dog doesn't do this. But you're right. They, they haven't, one, they haven't conditioned the dog to what they should be doing. Right. They haven't trained the dog. And then they haven't corrected the dog and pulled away from all those cookies and everything right. else. They've, they haven't taken the dog through the process that you talk about. Right. You know, that it's steps. Yeah. When Ashley was, um, the one I have now, <clears throat> when she was young, okay, she's five years old. Mm-hmm. So when she was coming up, we had to, pandemic thing mm. they shut all the shows down yeah. right so she was out of commission for like two years so how do you you know how do you get all these people to you know because i my, uh, my friends and i would go and you know go to the park and mm. we would practice so when she was ready to go because normally i don't go in to show the dog until she's through utility so you train from Open novice, to, to yeah, novice open to, and utility. So you do, your dog knows every single thing in all the groups and all the in yes. all the cr- levels. Yes. Then you start with with novice. Yes. So then I took um, I took her in and I I went to the Pasanita show, and I put her in um, beginning novice, okay, which is on lead, right? And because I wanted to see what she would do, she's never been in a show. Okay. So that was her first show. So I took her there, and she did very well. She got like a 198 or 199 or something. Out of 200, out of, <laughs> by the yeah, way, yeah, people might not out know. Out of uh, beginning novice. That's great. So that worked out really good. So then I didn't even, because conc- it's a separate issue from the regular classes. Mm-hmm. These are non-regular, the beginning novice and um, things like that. So um, I didn't have to complete it. So she did that one, and she was awesome. Oh, you just like, did that as a test? Yeah. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to see how she would, you know, with the, um, because the judge had to, you know, like touch her, mm-hmm. and because he's a complete, he or she is a complete stranger, and she just, you know, she ate, ate everything up. It was good. So I went right into novice, mm-hmm. and then um, that was, I think her first thing was at Stone Pony mm-hmm. out in Moor Park. Yep. And um, and she did great. She got a one ninety nine out of two hundred. That's great. She was awesome. So she went boom, 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 and she very seldom fails. She did uh, here recently. I told her I was going to strangle her. <laughs> <laughs> so and they, she was a little bit. Well, we we're doing the um, command exercise. You you either sit the dog or down the dog, and then you go fifteen feet, and then. Uh, the judge will give you a signal, and then you tell the dog what to do, and then you go 15 more feet, and you do the same thing. So she was um, she was laying down, <clears throat> and then I went 15 feet. So the judge gives, you know, just as I turned around, the, um, you know, it was almost like she's looking at me, and she goes, oh, I know, you're going to tell me to sit, and she pops up. And I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so, so we didn't do too well that day. And she had, a, I mean, would have had a nice score, but it was, you know, and that particular thing was zero. Um, so then I stopped doing that because now I got to, I put a different method on her. And so she's good. She's back to normal. Well, what's interesting, I think, in AKC, and it's not like that in other dog sports, is if you fail one exercise, you fail the whole class, right? You fail the whole... The rest, yes. Every, you, you, you can go on, yes. but you're not going to... They don't right. say, okay, we're just going to deduct 20 points from that exercise. It's like, you're done. It's a... It's well, you don't few. have you don't um, have to leave, though. No, but I'm saying, but you can't get the... T- you can, even if you got everything else perfect, right. 100%, that, that disqualifies you from placing. Yes. Or, or actually qualifying. Is what, what it's I'm called an NQ. NQ, NQ right. So what they also uh, recently have done, um, like last year, I think they started it. It's called um, fix and go. Mm -hmm. So say your dog um, didn't, you know, you're doing a recall with the dog. And you call it and then you say down and dog says, no, it's a zero. Right. Right. So then you can tell the judge, I want to do a fix and go. So then you put the dog back and, you know, you can kind of step forward and, you know, put mm-hmm. your hand out or something and say, down, 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 mm-hmm. to make sure the dog does it. Uh, and then from there, though, if there's any 
other exercises left, you have to go out of the ring. You can't yeah. do the rest of it. It's fix and go. That's yeah. why it's fix. You're fixing it, and then you got to go. Get out of there. Yeah. Do you think that's a good idea for a competitor to do a fix and go? Um, it depends. If it's the first exercise, I always tell my people, just keep going. Okay. Because you're not, you, at least the rest of it, because I tell them the rest of it, I says, you correct your dog all the time. Mm -hmm. I said, if there's a problem, just correct it. I says, you already failed. Right. So they give you an NQ, who cares? Yep. So, uh, but if it's toward the end, then I would, you know, say it's, do you got one more exercise and it depends, you know, what the problem is. Mm -hmm. Then I say, just, you know, do the fix and go. So, so when when you're coaching people on stuff, you take them all the way from the beginner, basically the dog's done nothing, and all the way through to utility. They can use you as a coach to go mm -hmm. all the way and keep going. Yeah. And your people do really well, by the way. Yeah, my girl just got her utility degree at uh, Ventura. I was there. Yes. I was there. The Schnauzer, oh, right? No, no, no. That oh. was, um, um, oh. what you call it, the little... The mini Schnauzer. No. The Corgi. No, it's a little black dog. What the heck is he? Rat Terrier. Um, rat Terrier. <laughs> 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 no, like a, um, she looks like a little Doberman, but she's small. Oh, the, uh, the, what do you call it? Manchester those dogs? Terriers. Yeah, something, okay. something like that. Okay. Yeah. What, so, what do you think, of, are there any dogs that you think are just not cut out for the sport, for obedience? Um, Breed-wise. Yeah, mostly the... Um, not working dogs the uh like if you had a corgi that would be one okay um there are some good corgis yeah but uh for the most part because every breed has one that'll you know stand out yeah. people um, always cite those like when i go this dog is not a good breed they always go i had a good one and i'm like that's great <laughs> you know but you yeah. got the one yeah a you basenji know, forget it i was going to say sight hounds yeah, the hounds. Yeah. Hounds are, are tough. Hard, hounds are tough. And um, what the heck was that other one? Um, uh, uh, Afghan. Oh, yeah. Forget it. But there's a great story about um, uh, Anne Marie. Yeah, she got it. She, she got, got it. She did. On an Afghan. Yes. I, she told me that before because yes. I was talking to her on the phone. Uh -huh. She sent me her DVDs. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can't train with you, but who can I train with who's like you? And mm -hmm. she said, Flo Wahlberg. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got hooked up. Yeah, it's what, she amazing, was, right? Yeah. She's got, I think, an Afghan in one of her videos, doesn't she? she probably, because yeah. that was way back when. That mm -hmm. was one of her um, girls that worked for her, too. Right. Yeah. That's a tough breed. That's I wouldn't want to show it. <laughs> no, but she finished yeah. it. They couldn't wait, you know, to. Yeah. And that dog got its degree. It was amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Jeez. That's I mean, they're pretty. I'm not big on them, but yeah, but they're well, pretty. I, yeah. I like to see that nice flowing yeah. hair. I don't want to comb it. Yeah. <laughs> but I like to see it. It's really, yeah. they're really nice. But have you ever had a dog where you just thought, I can't do it? This dog's just not going to get it. Not not yours personally, but like a dog when a client came and said, Yeah. You know, is it more the dog well, or the it's person? What, well, it's more the person. Right. Because when uh, the dog is kind of uh, lazy. And the, you know, and I say, do this, do this, do this. Well, they do that, do that, do that. And the dog is still, no. Uh -huh. And there's some of them I just sort of say, I think, you know, you're wasting your time. Try to be nice. We might not be a good fit. <laughs> <laughs> we might not be a you good try fit to be, I try to be nice <laughs> and tell them. <laughs> so when you're training, and this is something I really am touching a lot on, um, you're a very, very accomplished trainer, and you're very knowledgeable with dogs. Over many years you've mm -hmm. done it. There's this big movement in Europe, and it's hitting here, right? The positive-only crowd. I've had such conflict with it. Oh. Again, I'm a positive trainer. I like positive training. You're a positive trainer. Mm -hmm. You train cookies and treats and toys and all that. It's the word only I have a problem with, mm -hmm. right? Um, you use prong collars. I don't know if you use e-collars or not. I know you use prong collars very well, very mm -hmm. effectively, and very humanely. I, mm -hmm. I got to say that, um, and I've seen you do it. And you, we've done it with Goofy. Um, what's your having this much experience that you have let's talk just i mean let's just have a dialogue about this whole trying to ban prong collars and trying to ban e-collars and this and yeah. in switzerland you're banning crates you're oh banning, really oh yeah you can't have a slip lead slip leads are illegal over there it's a complete insanity 
Oh my God. And it's destroying breeds, by the way. It's just oh. destroying any good working land breed, wow. any dog with a personality or anything like that. But tell me about your feeling of that tool. How it, I mean, is it, how do you tell people, what do you tell people if they say, oh, that's such a mean, abusive tool and such yeah. and such? Yeah. Well, I, no, there was a couple of people that, you know, they called me and they wanted to, it was a friend of a friend. I didn't know these people and they called and they were moving up to, Colorado or somewhere, and um, they had a Labrador, and the dog was a nice dog, but he would like take off, mm -hmm. and then when they called him, he wouldn't come. So, um, so my friend had said, you know, to put an e collar on, but uh, the ugh, the wife didn't want to do it, and the husband did. So they had come over, and I had talked to them, and um, so then. They went, you know, obviously went home. So then he was going to uh, bring it, but then she didn't want to do it. Okay. So I <laughs> says, well, then don't do it. Okay. You know, I'm not right. going to argue with you. Right. So, so, so then they were getting close to leaving, and the dog was not a good dog. What kind of dog was it? It was a, a Labrador. Okay. Oh, you said that. Sorry. Yeah. So, and it was a nice dog. It's just that he didn't come in. So they were worried about it because they were they bought this house uh, like by the woods, mm -hmm. and they didn't want the dog to wander off in the woods or if it was going to go someplace, you know. And they call it and the dog would come back, and the dog would give him the paw. Uh -huh. So, um, so then he, they tried it again where he was going to come, and he did come, but um, she wasn't there. She didn't want to come, so. You know, I showed him exactly what to do. With the e-collar? Yeah. Okay. And, you know, and he did it. And then, so she was kind of like really annoyed when she got home because you have to buzz the dog. Mm -hmm. And so a little time went on again. This is like, I'm talking like weeks, mm -hmm. not days. And so she, you know, they call again. And I'm <laughs> like... So finally, it was her that called, mm -hmm. you know. So she was very apologetic and everything. And she says, I really want to do this. Oh. And, uh, what, changed her, what changed her mind? Because the dog was a little better because he had the lesson. Oh, the, so the, the husband, dog was showing promise. Yes. Okay, The got husband it. had the lesson. I showed him what to do. Mm -hmm. And then he was supposed to come back the following week. And then, um, then all of a sudden, it was like, no, but then it turned into a yes. Mm -hmm. And so she called me. And so we talked about it on the phone. And I says, are you sure? Mm -hmm. And I says, well, I want you to come so you can see it. I says, we're not killing the dog. Right. You know, and um, so she did. And it only took him two times. And the dog was perfect. And that's all they needed was the dog to, when they say, you know, fight, oh, come. Yeah. He turns around and says, okay. Did and they try other things first? Did they try cookies first? Oh, I guess they tried everything. I, but if a dog is leaving, you mm -hmm. know, and you would going to say, I got a cookie yeah, for you. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, okay, I'll be there. Yeah, the dog's yeah. desire to yeah. get the cookie is not as high as the desire to go chase the sheep or the... Right, or, or you know, he's going to go somewhere and, and uh, you want him to come back. Yeah. So that will get hit going across the street or whatever. I, I think that's what people miss, right? I mean, again, I start everything with a cookie mm -hmm. or a toy, and then the rest is up to the dog. I give them every choice. If they yeah. don't want to do it, I, and again, I don't believe like in putting a square peg in a round hole. Like I mm -hmm. think some dogs are not, I, I've got a client now, he's got a dog, he wanted to do bite work with the dog. The dog doesn't have the nerves for it. So right. I said, you're putting a square peg in a round hole. You yeah. don't want to do it, get another dog. Right? Yeah. Or just don't push this dog to do something that they're not capable of doing. Mm. The only thing I do, there's three things I expect every dog to know, and that is come, stay, and leave it. Mm -hmm. And those, by hook or crook, they got to know it mm -hmm. because it's, it's life and death. Mm -hmm. you know. And so it's not like what you're doing in obedience and stuff like that or what I've done in the sports and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it is a lot of this, the shelter work I did for 12 plus years, more. Those dogs are dying in shelters. Mm -hmm. you know and uh, you could put an e-collar on the dog and i mean i would rather have an e-collar on my dog than live in jail for three years you know mm -hmm. i mean and people just don't want to do that wh yeah. wh where is that come from from the time you started training to now 
w w w do you know what this radical shift is or why we ha why we're seeing this shift i don't know i really don't uh i can't figure out wh wh where all this positive stuff yet yeah uh because the other thing that it kind of comes out w when um when i actually i i do not i do not have children mm -hmm. but uh when kids you know say you're home and you give the kid a spanking mm -hmm. this kid can actually call the police it's the biggest joke ever <laughs> huh? yeah i got spanked mommy hit me really <laughs> yeah what'd you do and now mm -hmm. all of a sudden everything's so positive and then my friend's uh her kid had even you know like threatened her if you hit me i'm gonna I'm going to call the police. <laughs> you know what's funny? I think, and this is a really interesting thing, all this positive stuff mm -hmm. is all positive until they're talking to a person who's using an e-collar on a dog, and then they get really mean. Mm. They're really mean to other people. Mm. You know, like if, if I remember somebody, I said something, I said, you know, my mom spanked me when I was growing up. I didn't think it was a big deal. Mm -hmm. And I grew up, I love my mother. I take care mm -hmm. of my mother. My mother's an assistant. Yeah. I see her every week. I love my mother to death. But... The idea that just because I got corrected that I didn't love my mother, and my dog's been corrected. My dog loves me more than right. any other dog loves their people. You know, right. He'll do anything. He'll walk through fire for me. I think when I see these people and they come after me, one person said, well, you were abused and you're, you're a victim and that's oh. how abuse is control. And they really have no idea. It's just a crazy cult mindset. Yeah. And I think dogs are suffering immensely. We're breeding softer and softer dogs. This is a conversation I always have with people who are mm -hmm. doing protection. We're breeding dogs that are so soft that they don't really need these corrections. But then, the same by the same respect, they're not strong enough to handle what might befall them, like like a, a, a car backfiring right mm. or another dog growling at them they lose their marbles and they either fall apart or become horribly aggressive right and that's what we're not addressing is that we're trying to create a society whether it's people and everybody's always triggered and offended mm -hmm. by everything right so we're creating a society like that and then we're creating dogs like that mm -hmm. and they're just becoming weaker and weaker and you're seeing these dogs you know all these rescue dogs and every dog no dog gets culled and you know that, that's why the shelters are full of really bad dogs oh, yeah. sometimes I like to go through because I live in Chatsworth, mm -hmm. and every now and then I take a walk through there to see what they have, mm -hmm. and and um, it's really kind of sad because most of them are pit bulls. Mm -hmm. And then um, you get uh, there was one I walked through. There was they were kind of low that time. They had about eighty five dogs or something, and they had like sixty pit bulls. Yeah, and I was counting them. I said I got to count this and see. And they had like seven or eight shepherds. Mm -hmm. And then they had the little chihuahuas and stuff. Yes. Yeah. That, um, yeah. No, that weren't. That's a, a big lie I think they tell. And I've got, you know, I've done podcasts about this. There's such a lie. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, pit bulls are great dogs. I said, no, they're not. I, I don't mm -hmm. think any dog just by breed is great. I don't think Rottweilers are great. I don't think Malinois mm -hmm. are great German shepherds. There are good dogs in every breed. But just to say all pit bulls are good mm -hmm. is, I think, yeah. it does a disservice to the dog, you know, overall. And people mm -hmm. get these dogs and they bring them with kids and they don't do any training. And mm -hmm. you're seeing people, you know. And again, now you have so many pit bulls. And the number of shepherds was, has been dropped. The Rottweilers suffered in the shelters for many, many years. Um, and now we're seeing more Malinois, Malinois, because mm -hmm. everybody had to get one Malinois, Malinois, Malinois. And they're, they're flooding in the shelters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and West LA, I was just there. They, they have all these like, you know, these uh, livestock guarding dogs, like, you know, a Anatolian shepherds, called Caucasian mm -hmm. shepherds. And it's like, people can't handle these dogs. Mm -hmm. you know? what, what do you tell people? Because you're a woman, and I, I sometimes people come across and say I'm sexist by saying this. I said, a lot of times, if you're a small woman, you shouldn't have a big dominant dog. Mm -hmm. um, does that sound sexist to you? I mean, when I say that, I mean, maybe it no. is. I mean, you can call me on, I don't care. No, but. I, I, the person should have. I mean, as long as the dog, you know, well behaved, mm -hmm. Because if that dog gives her one pull, she's gone. Yeah, she's going to be on the ground. Okay, but the dog has to be, you know, well trained, etc. Right. Then she should have it because it's a good protection. Yeah, and I know plenty of women who are much more, much stronger than men, and mm -hmm. they have very dominant dogs. I've seen mm -hmm. women do it, but and again, I don't think a small guy should have a really dominant dog either. You know, I mean, it's it's just. A dominant dog is a hard dog to have, and a lot of these mastiffs and these pits and, mm -hmm. and, and these shepherds are dogs that are really strong and they're going to take you down and they're going to pull you. I have clients with Malinois, they, they go after other, Malinois are notorious dog reactive. Mm. 
um, and they'll go after another dog, and then you're, you know, dragging along behind them trying to get to them. Oh, absolutely. There was one I went to um, a year ago, and uh, they had the Bakersfield show up at the um, fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. So, and there was a girl that had taken lessons with me. She had a Malinois. And when I first saw her, we were at one of the dog shows, and she had a dog next to her, and she was asking me about training it. So I looked at the dog, and she says, oh, no, it's not this one. She says, the dog's in the car. And I said, okay, um, I'll look at it after I finish showing. So I did, and, and it was a cool day. So, you know, it's not like the dog was right. in the heat. So, and the dog was only like eight months old, right? Mm -hmm. Small, mal not, not small, young Malinois. Mm -hmm. so, so we took the dog out, and um, so she had a cookie. I says, all right, let me test her out a little bit so i took the or he it was a he so i took the dog and i walked it around a little bit petted it a little bit and then as we started to go so i put the cookie out you know to to look at it mm -hmm. and i'm walking along and and i popped it a little bit and the dog did not have a pinch collar and it had a regular collar mm -hmm. and i went like this and the dog went rawr, rawr, rawr. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, and I told her about it. I says, you know, that dog just growled at me. I says, this dog definitely needs a few corrections mm -hmm. now because it's only eight months old. For sure. So, um, so she was going to come, and this was, uh, would be the end of October. So she doesn't come till January. Okay. So, and she was, some, uh, the girl was short. And the dog was at that time, you know, quite large, not really large, but tall. Mm -hmm. So we start, um, you know, we did a couple lessons and it was like the third lesson. And, and I knew the dog was not like happy about me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really touch the dog. <laughs> okay. I let her do it. Uh -huh. So then we go and she wanted to show me something in, in the car. And she had one of those where you can pick up the back you know, and you got your car there. Uh -huh. So she uh, undoes the door. And so she leans over to look at it. The dog was on her right side. I was on her left side. Mm -hmm. So she was opening this thing up. So I leaned over to look, and that sucker jumped to attack me over, over, over her. her. Wow. And luckily, she grabbed the dog. You know, and now I'm telling her what to do with the dog. And and she's and the dog jumps up there. When she jumped, the dog jumps and puts his feet on her shoulders and I'm telling her, you know, to correct the dog, etc. And she's going to the dog, Oh, bougie, 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 and the dog's kissing her. How's that one? Mm. I thought, Oh, he's gonna be a lovely dog and I <laughs> said to her, Goodbye. You wouldn't take her as a client. Oh, I threw her out. Uh -huh. No, I uh -huh. threw her out. She can't even listen to this, please. Yeah. And then they're going to blame me for it. Yeah. So time went on, and then um, this was um, not this past year. It was a, a year ago in the fall. It, we were in Bakersfield, and um, there was, I saw this girl walk by, and I'm like, I wonder if that's her, that, you know, she that was at the house, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so time went on. So then they were going to do novice, and she brings out a Malinois. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's her. Same right? dog? Same. Well, no, this was a novice now. Okay. No, this was, because that other one was years ago. Got I don't it. know okay. what happened there. Got it. So, um, so I went out on the street, so I called my friend. I says, come here, i got to watch this chick. So she goes in novice, and of course you're on a leash. Mm -hmm. So the dog did its things, and there were people on. You, you've been to the sure. fairgrounds there, so we're standing on the street, and then the ring is in front of us, and these people were standing, and they had a um, young puppy that was, you know, just out visiting, mm -hmm. and so they were. And there was a few people on the street there. So her dog goes around, does that. So she's got to take the leash off. Now she's got to do off-lead healing. And the dog goes, and they call the pattern uh, up, and then right turn, right turn. And that dog looked, and she's, that dog saw that puppy start running, jumped over the, f uh, the fence. Yeah, baby gates. And attacked that puppy. How's that? Uh, and I said, that's her. And she kept, you know, she came running. 
and um, and the people that were out on the street, they, yeah, you know, they kicked it and whatever they could do to get it away, and they grabbed a puppy so it wouldn't get hurt. And then she comes and she gets there, and, and as soon as she started talking, especially, I knew it was her. <laughs> oh yeah, and then uh, and here's for me the bad thing about AKC. They didn't throw the. They did not write the dog out. Wow! Because the the judge there said it was outside the ring. I you know, and I'm like, wow. what? It started inside the ring. Yeah. She started running and yeah. made make her kill here. Is that something? That's crazy. Oh yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Well, you know one. Of, I, that's one of the issues I have with AKC. Like, I I, I get it. Sportsmanship. We're in the ring. No corrections. No, mm -hmm. I get that. I, I have no problem with that. But when they say on the grounds, you can't have a prong collar or, you know, you yeah. can't give the correction. I mean, this is leading, because we already know, having competed in AKCNU, the way we get a dog to do stuff is by luring and shaping and by correcting. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt in anybody's mind that we've corrected the dogs. And to give a dog a pop on a leash, you know, got on your way in the ring or just outside or whatever, I just have such an issue that they try to hide that. We have to do that sometimes. Yeah. And and I think that moves into that whole thing with the positive only movement where, you know, they think there is nothing ever, you know, we mm -hmm. have to hide all this. And hiding it, putting it like illegalizing the e-call, like in Europe, they're still using them. Oh, you yeah. Know, the prong callers, they're still using yeah. them. You know, it's just that with the fact that we have to hide, that we give dog correction and people, like what you said, make it so evil that we correct a dog. Once in a while, I mean, honestly, I, mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine... A society where we have just taken them down to such a, a strict level where people mm -hmm. don't can't take any pressure and any any correction. Well, most anything. people now uh, they're treating the dog like it's human. Yeah, I mean, I treat my dog like it's human, but I, not at the same time. I don't. Right. I mean, if it needs a correction or, or you know, I would um, you know tell it to stop or yeah. whatever, give it a little tap. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't beat my dog up. Of course but not. If, um, you know, especially when you're raising it, yeah. You know, if you have the proper use uh, on it, you know, if you use a pinch collar on yeah. it, it's fine. And you, and a lot of people, I tell them when you have it on, I said, don't just put the pinch collar on. I said, alternate the links, mm -hmm. so it has three links that touch it, and mm -hmm. the rest of the links are going up, mm. and then gradually turn the links over. Oh, that's a good. I never heard that before. Yeah. That's really good. Okay. Yeah, because if you have a young puppy, some of them, it, even though they're puppies, mm -hmm. they're strong. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't want to go uh, and right. you know hurt the dog or something. So I start out that way and just put it. Um, I've never heard that before. Yeah, it comes in handy. Yeah, that's a and great then, little trick. And then because it has just you know a couple, so it feels it. Mm -hmm. And then it gradually, as the dog starts to get a little older, you just flip them. And can you condition like the dog? So let's say you would take the dog started out with two or three and then you work it to all eight or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then would you at some point start reversing them again? So the dog now thinks there's no more corrections. So the dog doesn't become, cause I, I deal a lot with people who uh -huh. come to me and say, my dog's collar wise. When I have an e-collar on the dog listens perfectly. Mm -hmm. And I say that cause you keep taking it on and off. Mm -hmm. And when it's off, he goes, okay, it's off. Now I get away with it. They know. Mm -hmm. And it's something I've, I've never knock on wood had that issue where a dog was collar wise. I mean, mm -hmm. they know they're going to get corrected and whether there's a collar on or not, going to be a correction right you know? well what they can do is um like if you have your uh, pinch collar on uh when you start you want to use the other one you mm -hmm. know use a different cut leave the pinch collar on but put uh, i put a choke chain on yep. it yeah and so it's still got that on so if i correct it with the choke chain if it doesn't do what i'm supposed you know it's supposed to do then i because i already have the pinch collar, and i always have a little uh, thing hanging there mm -hmm. a little tag yeah. hanging and um so then I grab that and give it a yeah. you know a little yank, mm -hmm. and then the dog say it was you're trying to get it to sit, and it says no, I don't want to sit. Mm -hmm. So then I'll just give it a little tug, mm -hmm. and then so it gets used to the pinch collar. Mm -hmm. I mean the um, the correction, yeah, the correctional collar. Mm -hmm. Do you think that people who are just trying to do everything, po and again, I always tell people if you can do it positive only, I think it's great because I, I it's my goal. My goal is to teach a dog without ever giving it right. a correction, but it just doesn't. I've never seen it work in the thousands of dogs I've worked with at shelters or whatever. But what do you think about people who are kind of like trying to force it on you? They're saying, "No, you shouldn't use corrections. You're, you should be illegal to use a prong collar or an e collar." Like, what's your message for those people? Um, 
I, I wouldn't argue with them. That's okay. what they think. Yeah. Hey. You but know. what if they're saying we need to make e collars, prong collars illegal in America? Oh no, I would, I would be against that. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, I don't care. If you can do it, I think yeah. it's great. I mean, I, I, it's my goal, but I, I've just never seen it. Because I, maybe I've dealt with more dogs, or maybe I've just had really mm -hmm. bad luck. But I've never seen the ability to be able to... I, I think it comes in that proofing phase, right? I think it's... We can get the dog to do a sit with, it, with just a cookie. We can get the dog to do mm -hmm. it down with just a cookie. But I think when you have a dog, and the prey drive kicks in, and the personality kicks in, where they say, you know what? I don't want to do it. I think then you're kind of stuck, mm -hmm. right? I don't want the treat, and I don't want to come. Mm -hmm. so then where, where do you go from there i think that's well uh, when you're teaching it though to come mm -hmm. you know i always have like a little lead on it mm -hmm. and i'll teach them short you sure. know and then once you get past that six foot lead then i put a little flexi on it mm -hmm. and if you the dog that, yeah. yeah dog you know does a sit stay and then i go out a ways mm -hmm. and then if it doesn't come then i give it a little tug with the you taught me to go out like that too with a flexi yeah. sending yeah. you know i remember that right let, so it, let me ask you a couple of questions and then i'll, I'll let you go because i know you got a long drive to get home um your favorite exercise in obedience let's go let's do it different uh, your favorite or your favorite um exercise in open oh in open yeah um let me think what would be my favorite there probably uh, um retrieving over the high jump i like that okay because she gets excited yeah. you know and she'll jump over and jump over back and do you have a least favorite least favorite in there <laughs> yeah that damn command exercise <laughs> <laughs> but that's new right that was that's yeah, a that's new thing new. they just added that's right new. yeah um okay your favorite exercise in utility utility um let's see I like the go outs, you know, where you send the dog out and okay. it has to do his jumps. The directional jumping. Yeah. And what about your least jumps. favorite? And there, well, it used to be, well, depend on which dog I had. <laughs> it used <laughs> right. to be gloves. <laughs> okay. Where he hated glove three. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, let's see, what would I do? That? Um, the least favorite. I don't have a least no? favorite there. Is there one that you think is the hardest to train of all of them? In either one of them? Probably in, the one I like the best. It's, the directional oh, jumping. Yeah. yeah, it's very hard. Yeah. It's very hard. I've, I've they had a gotta hard time know. with it. They got to know which, you know, when you put your hand out. Which one do you think most people fail at in utility? Do you think it's directional jumping? Yeah. Or? You don't think it's, it's Well, articles? it could be the, um, no, it could be the signals where you heal, mm. you know, signal exercise. You yeah. heal without saying anything. You can give a hand signal mm -hmm. um, and then you heal around. Then they say, stand your dog. You go across the ring and then give the down and the sit and the come. That's I've had a goofy look away when I was supposed to do it. Oh, <laughs> I, was, I was in City of Industry yeah. and I left him and it was so noisy. And I got, I, he did everything perfect. I stand, I w went to the other side and something crashed on the other side. And, um, and she said, boom. And I went, uh, I was waiting because he wasn't looking at me. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, okay, I'm just going to wait. And then, of course, you fail. You know, she, yeah. And I said, you're done. <laughs> Well, sometimes you can, you know, buy some time. Mm -hmm. Like if you go across the ring. Right. And the first thing when I do is when I'm turning, uh -huh. I turn my head first. Okay. As I'm turning to see what the dog is doing. <laughs> right. And then say the dog uh, is looking this way. Yeah. Then I shuffle my feet a little bit. So I buy myself maybe like five seconds. Okay. Because they got to wait until you're standing still. That's a good tip. So that, that, uh, <laughs> That comes in handy. Um, and one time with, um, when I was, let's see, we were at Ventura with uh, Murphy. And, <laughs> oh, man, I wanted to kill him. So we were doing that sit down stand thing. And I, I went to sit him. And just as I started my hand, now once you start your hand, you started it. Yep. Okay, you're stuck. <laughs> so I started it and, and he turned sideways. And I'm like, oh no. And I'm going and I'm going like in slow motion. And I went all the way up and then my toes were up and the dog turned back and he sat. Oh, you're kidding. No. Oh my God. He turned back. I, I got the time. Wow. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so then, you know, he came and everything with the other uh, hand uh -huh. signal. So then after we were all finished, and it wasn't a failure. They would, you know, mm -hmm. she would take points off for being a little bit 
slow. slow. <laughs> and we still won the class. Wow. <laughs> But so you learn a lot. Of, like you could. I watch find it, I, I yeah. think these things up myself. What yeah. am I going to do now? Right. But yeah. that's pretty interesting because those are things like when I turned around and he wasn't looking at me, I was like, oh, and she went, you know, boom. And I went, mm. and you have to do it. Yeah. You know, you can't just go, uh, you know, because a couple of times, like certain times when I was you waiting. You can wait a little. Yeah, but I've, I've waited too long with uh -huh. it. You know, that's yeah. it. You got to do it. And mm -hmm. you kind of get screwed. And then <laughs> if you have to do some kind of hand signal, I do it very slowly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't think about the, the slowly. Yeah, thing. That's good. it comes in handy. But they've changed a lot of the AKC stuff lately. Like they don't do the groups anymore. Right? Yeah, like, they put in that command exercise. Well, the groups, the dogs are always fighting. Yeah. And a lot of people pulled their dogs out because they had a chihuahua and they have, a, uh, say, a Rottweiler next here. Next to it. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, it's not fair. You know, so they were scared that the mm -hmm. dog would, you know, I mean, things have happened. Sure. Um, many times. I mean, I've seen quite a few fights. Yeah, I, but you know what's interesting? What I think about, though, is like when we compete, like I started back when that was all still in. Mm -hmm. and. It was a lot harder to train a dog to be in a in a downstay and you're out of the building mm -hmm. than it is to teach a dog to go downstay mm -hmm. and come back to it. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's almost not fair. But now they do it on leash. I mean, and this is what I'm saying. Like we, we're we're just making it easier and easier and easier in some ways. I agree. I mean, mm -hmm. we don't want to endanger dogs, but in some ways, it's like I think they should have kind of changed it because you did a lot more work for your utility or mm -hmm. you know whatever than people are doing now because they don't mm -hmm. have to they don't have to train a dog to. Out of sight stay is, I think, one of the hardest things to teach a dog. Yeah, that was an open. An open, open. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was very hard to do that. And some dogs failed, but mm -hmm. yeah. So tell me what your um, future is. Like, what, what are your goals now? You still have some things, you some boxes you still want to tick well, in obedience? Um, my thing with her is I'd like to, you know, the dog I have now, I'd like her to just continue on and, you know, get a whole bunch of more points mm -hmm. well i think it's going to happen <laughs> so she's um you know we went to florida here i was um not that well i did i went last year when they had the classic and then the year before that i took ashley mm -hmm. and she was in um wait what was she in there yeah she was in the thing and I think it was utility. I had finished utility with her, and and she was awesome in there. She she just killed them. Wow. Yeah, and there was they were having um, they had then there was a Rottweiler show, mm -hmm. and it was the so you would do opening and utility, mm -hmm. and so my friend who's you know she raises Rottweilers, and so I said to her, um, we were parked in the in the near the obedience so i said well okay i said look at all these people here i said which ones are the you know that are good mm -hmm. so she's looking you know and then she goes oh she says that one right there she's from wherever mm -hmm. and uh, so i said okay and then she said that other one is you know pretty good blah 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 i said okay fine because I wanted to see them practicing, sure, you know, and see what they do. So after I saw both of them practicing, <laughs> I know this I shouldn't say, but I said no, to my should. to myself, yeah. I said, "You're dead meat." <laughs> They're dead meat. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. So, so then the next day was the show, uh -huh. and Ashley won everything. She won all wow. of it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> no, I watched them train their, you know, yeah. dogs on the outside. I thought, yeah. no, you may be okay, but not That's great. Funny. Well, you're definitely fun to watch. So. I mean, if, if people, <laughs> people should watch you because I think, like I said, the confidence you go in with your methodology, whatever your secret yeah. is before you go in the ring. I, th I don't know. I don't know what that is, and I know you watch you a lot, but you do bring a lot to the table, a lot of oomph, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you're a, 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 an amazing performer and uh, trainer. So. Well, I mean, you don't see too many, um, <clears throat> not that I'm bragging, but you don't see too many people that have, that, you know, like win with Rottweilers yeah. or outside dogs, mm -hmm. okay? You got the Border Collies yep. and you got the uh, Goldens. Goldens. Okay, those are your main uh, yeah. dogs. And, and even Australian Shepherds. Yeah, Aussies, yeah. Um, they're real good. 
So I feel very good that, you know, my dog is in that mix. I mean, mm-hmm. she doesn't win all the time. Well, she does pretty darn good. No, but she's, mm-hmm. you know, like very seldom fails. Yeah. And she'll make a mistake. But, and that doesn't bother me either because she did great. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not some dog that, you know, says, I don't want to do this. Right. It's and an honest mistake. Yeah. She just, you know, um, did whatever she did and, and uh, made a mistake. So it, it works out good. So I'm very happy with that. I think you should write a book or do something. Oh, you sound like my friend. She's been bugging me for five years. <laughs> no, and I says, well, saying. why would you want me to write a book? I said, I'm here. I am the book. You, no, you are. But I'm saying <laughs> people, like, that's what happens like with my website online. Mm-hmm. People, like, they're always saying, well, I can't come train with you. And I was like, all right, I'll do it online. And, you know, mm-hmm. teach people. Mm-hmm. But all this stuff, because, I mean, besides the Anne-Marie stuff, mm-hmm. which is really old now. I mean, I think it's yeah. on DVD oh, yeah. or something. You yeah, can't yeah, really yeah. watch it anymore. But um, there's not that much stuff that I see, like these insights that you that you have mm-hmm. you know well think about it i do my best <laughs> if you write one come back and talk about oh, it okay <laughs> okay all right all right, all right. let's thank wrap it up you. thank you so much for being uh, here you're welcome.